Hello children and welcome back to the chapter Simple Machines. We will be studying part 2 now. If we have to do a quick recap of what we did in the previous part, we looked into what was lever. We studied the three different classes of levers which were first class levers, we studied second class levers and we studied third class levers. Then we studied about the inclined plane and the screw. So we left off the last two simple machines which was pulley and wheel and axle. So let's see what is a pulley. Now if you travel back in time King Hieron of Syracuse asked Archimedes this is Archimedes to single-handedly drag a large ship from the beach Now can you think of what he thought of and how he could pull it Can you imagine what would you do if somebody asked you to pull a ship all by yourself from the sea It's quite tough right but Archimedes was such a brilliant person that he used pulleys to pull the ship up So if you see right here this is a huge pulley that he built and he with the help of these pulleys pulled the ship to the shore. So what is a pulley? If you see a pulley, a simple pulley consists of a grooved wheel with a rope passing through it and it is normally fixed to a support above the load. So if you see this image here, it is a wheel which has a groove in the center. on which the rope will lie and this is generally fixed to a support so this is the fixing area and if you see the load will be at one end of the rope and the effort will be at the other end suppose this is the load on one end this will be the effort which will be at the other end of the rope now such pulley just change the direction of force that's all they do for example if you want to pull something up we will be putting the effort downward so the downward effort is used to pull the load upwards if you see a classic example of the bucket of water that we pull from the well this is the effort here which we are putting this is e effort and this effort we are putting it downwards whereas the load which is the bucket of water is moving upwards so can you see there is a change of direction of force effort is put downwards so that the load is pulled upwards we can pull something down towards the earth but we cannot pull something upwards because it's going against gravity so it's easier to pull objects downwards than to pull them upwards So what are the examples for where pulleys are used? Pulleys are used to lift water from wells. They are used in hoisting of flags. So whenever you have Independence Day celebrations, go and observe your flag post. It will generally have a pulley at the end. And we see this in construction sites where workers use pulleys to lift heavy objects like bricks and cement. So these are the uses of the pulley. Now let us see the next one which is the wheel and axle. What is a wheel and axle? Now if you observe a potter uses a force of turning a wheel to give shape to his mud which is in the center of the wheel. So this is a turning wheel. So he puts his mud right in the center and as it is turning he just puts his hand to shape it. So he is actually using the force of this turning wheel to give shape to his mud. Now many machines have wheels in them which turn other parts. Examples for this we have the sewing machine, we have the egg beater and we have the screw driver which have all turning parts. So if you see in the egg beater we have this turning part which we turn round and round where the egg gets beaten at the end. We have the screw driver which we wind round and round so that the nail goes in. So in the same way we have wheel like arrangement in all of these machines. Now the same thing if you look at some machines like your cars trucks or trains they all run on wheels and the interesting thing is the wheels used in all of these machines that is the car trucks or trains they have a rod that is attached in the center to the two wheels so this rod is called as the axle if you can see this image here this is the wheels of a train so it is attached with a rod in the center same thing for a car or a truck they have two wheels which are again attached with a rod in the center so this rod in the center of 
two wheels is what we will call as the axle. Now a wheel and axle together make a simple machine which can lift very heavy objects with very less effort. You know the amount of goods and people that a train or a truck can carry with such ease, right? That is all thanks to this simple machine wheel and axle. Now let us study a little more in detail about what is weight and what is volume. Now we can measure the amount of any substance given to us in two different ways. One is by determining its volume and the second is by determining weight. To understand this, let us take example now. First, let's look at how to determine something with the help of its volume. When we buy milk or petrol, we don't buy them in kgs, right? We measure them by its volume, which is in liters. This speaks about the amount of space that they occupy. Whereas, if you see examples like rice or potato, we measure it based on kilograms, which is nothing but the weight or how heavy it is. We don't measure it on how much space it occupies. So this is the major difference between volume and weight. Now we have to understand the relationship between weight and volume of a substance. So what do we do? When a volume of a substance increases, its weight also naturally increases. The more the weight of rice, the greater will be its volume. So if you buy 1 kg of rice and 2 kgs of rice, when you compare these two, you know that 1 kg rice is lighter than 2 kg rice. Even the space occupied that by that 1 kg of rice is lesser than the space occupied by 2 kgs of rice. So this is very easy to understand. But if we buy 1 kg of rice, 1 kg of cotton, which one do you think will have a greater volume? Just think for two seconds. You have I have given you 1 kg of rice and I have given you 1 kg of cotton. Which do you think has more space? Which do you think will occupy more space? I will make it easier for you with a small hint. Now tell me which one will occupy more space? If you said cotton, you are absolutely right because cotton is very light and it takes a lot of cotton to get 1 kg. So the volume of, of 1 kg cotton is more than the volume of 1 kg rice. So the same thing to understand better, if we take equal volumes of cotton and rice, suppose I have a small plastic container, I'm giving you equal volumes, that is I'm measuring the space that they occupy. I'm giving you one box of cotton and one box of rice. Which do you think will be heavier? Just think for a second. I'll give you a hint again. So this is the visual cue. Now tell me, which one is heavier? If you said that the rice is heavier, you're absolutely right. So if you can see the weighing scale here, rice weighs about 3 kilos while cotton weighs just a little above 1 kilo for the same volume. So why is this that volumes and weights differ for different things? So we can say this by saying equal volumes of different materials have different weights. But why is it like that? So to understand this, we will use their densities. So what is density? If you see density, density of a substance tells us how closely the molecules in them are packed. So if you see this image here, if a substance has high density, then its molecules will be very closely packed. Whereas if it is low density, then its molecules are very loosely packed. So what is density? The definition of density is that it is the weight of unit volume of a substance. Now it can also be represented as density is equal to weight divided by its volume. The greater the density of a substance, the more closely its molecules will be packed and more heavier it will feel. That is why we will say that rice is, has more density than cotton because it is more heavier than cotton, right? So it has more density than cotton. 
now we will move on to another interesting thing called as floating and sinking why certain objects float why certain objects sink now i have given you a wood and a rock and a big bucket of water i'll ask you to put both of them in water so if you notice the log of wood will float on water whereas the stone is going to sink why why can't the stone also float on water why can't the wood sink into water so if you see it's not just about size or weight that makes things float or sink it is density what is density density is nothing but the arrangement of molecules how compactly or how loosely they are arranged so if an object is denser than water it will sink in water but if it is less dense than water it will float on water so you tell me children which of these two is more dense is it the wood or is it the rock just think for 2 minutes is it the wood or is it the rock which one has more density if you said rock then you're absolutely right because rock has more density than water that's why it sinks into water whereas wood has lesser density than water that's why it is floating on water so we say that if something is denser than water it will it will sink and if something is less dense than water it will float so the question is what is the density of water if you see the density of water it is 1 kg per liter which means if you take 1 liter of water and weigh it on a weighing scale it will weigh 1 kg so the density of water is 1 kg per liter and the density of substances like wood wax or cotton wool is lesser than 1 that's why they all float on water whereas if you see density of metals like iron or aluminum they are all greater than 1 that is the reason why they sink in water so this completes part 2 let's do a quick recap i hope you've understood we first looked into what we left off about the simple machines which was the pulley which we said is a wheel which has a groove in the center for the rope and it is attached to a support so effort is on one end and we said that the load is on the other end and generally this changes direction to pull the load upwards we are putting an effort downwards then we looked into wheel and axle where we saw that the wheels are attached to a rod in the center which is the axle and this helps us in carrying a lot more heavier goods with lesser effort then we spoke about weight and volume we saw that the amount of any substance can be determined in two different ways the first was by using its volume and the second was by checking its weight and we saw for volume example was milk which we buy in terms of liters and weight we saw example of rice and potato which we buy in terms of kgs or how heavy it is then we saw density of a substance and we said that density tells us how closely the molecules in the substance are packed and we saw the definition of density which is weight of unit volume of a substance then we spoke about an interesting thing about floating and sinking we saw that when we put a wood in water and a rock we saw that the rock sinks whereas wood floats we said that this is because of density because wood is less dense than water whereas rock is more dense that's why it sinks and then we spoke about the density of water which we said was 1 kg per liter that is 1 liter of water will weigh 1 kg so with this we complete part 2 of simple machines if you have any doubt at all just write to us and we will definitely clear your queries thank you